This is on the counting in the awareness of the breath. Now, you don't always have to do the counting, <coughs> but the counting has very useful functions. So, uh, there are two main reasons why we put the counting in from time to time. One is that it helps you get the sense that you're using your mind while actually being mindful in this case, of the breath. So even though the mind is using very simple numbers like counting, uh, it's still involved in the process. And that process of being aware of the breath as a continuity is the primary thing. The breath is the thing. The counting comes in intermittently at the either at the end of the out-breath or the beginning of the in-breath and the art to counting is to find a way of doing it more at the back of the mind as it were so not really blocking everything else when it comes out and that it's quiet so it's not really obvious and it's sort of for want of a better term, translucent. The number, the count, allows you to experience the breath. It doesn't block, it's not opaque, it doesn't block the experience of the breath. So you get used to having this sense of an experience, in this case the breath, and the mind coming in quite clearly and connected with the experience but not interfering with the experience. Actually, almost like being a, a layer, an acetate layer, a translucent layer that you can, as it were, see through, but is still there. So the number also is, is very quick. So it's not like one. It's just a mind nanosecond count. So this sort of back of mind, quiet, quick count that is translucent are the skills to develop in counting. Now, each of the, the two ways of counting in terms of the end of the out-breath and the beginning of the in-breath help to focus the mind. And they help you to get a clear sense of tracking whether your awareness is on track or not. So it's very clear. Uh, if you decide you're going to count to five or ten and you, lo you lose count, well, it's immediately obvious. Or if you've counted up to 30, it's, imme it's obvious. Not me <laughs> immediately, perhaps, but it is obvious. Uh, so then you know quite clearly you've got this uh, quite tangible sense of your mind wandering off. So that's important. So at the end, counting at the end of the out-breath, as soon as the breath is finished, the number is there. Uh, it doesn't interfere with any space or lack of space that's between the two breaths. It's just there. You'd, and the, the sense of the breath is continuous. There's a more sort of relaxed quality about counting at the end of the breath. So the breath ends and it's just a one. With the uh, counting at the beginning of the in-breath, it's more imperative. It's got more of an edge to it, sort of one in, out. You're just, the mind is sort of being more on the ball with it, catching it. Sh uh, sh I was almost going to say sharply, but with an edge anyway, one in, out. But still that number is done translucently, softly, more at the back of the mind, not dominating, and certainly being very quick. So you don't want to get into the situation where you breathed out and then the number is so long <coughs> that the breath would already have started. It's just in there. So in that way, you get used to thinking over time, 
oh, today is a day where I definitely need the counting. My mind's all over the place, it's scattered or it's fixating on certain things. So I need to use my mind very clearly and the counting will help me. So in that way you decide on the counting and you bring it in. Now you don't have to do the whole of your mindfulness of the breath on the counting. Start with the counting and then drop the counting once you're more present and engaged in the experience of the breath.